too much. I ain't got to do all that. Too. Give it up. Give it up for everybody y'all seen. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody y'all seen so far. Give it up. That's right, I'm missing the math class, I did, I did. Thank y'all for coming out, man. I want to hold y'all for a little bit to tell y'all a whole bunch of nothing. Ain't going to make no sense to y'all life at all. Just want to tell y'all a little bit about the shit I've been doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, like, if I don't want to think they'd be exaggerating just a little bit. <laughs> like, who in the car flipping and counting at the same time? They're like, one, two. Like, yeah, I gotta keep counting this in case somebody asks me how they count. <laughs> like, the car that really flipped over three times, you can add the other 12 flips on their time and get some more money from the insurance company. <laughs> You can be a witness standing right there like, yeah, they called me flip three times. He had a lot of 12 on there. I saw it. <laughs> nah. I look up to a lot of different people, though. I like Oprah Winfrey. We got a lot of common. You know, she's rich and she's not married. You know, I'm not rich yet, but I ain't married. <laughs> I encourage other people to get married, though. Like my nephew, his baby mama, you know, just had a second, just had a second baby. I called him, I was like, hey man, you wanna marry that girl? You don't wanna be raising your son and no co-parenting households. He looked at me and said, oh, you got a son, you ain't married? I was like, yeah, I know, but my son, 12, in six more years, he'll be 18, that's around time I'd be getting a divorce anyway. <laughs> I waited too late, don't do what I did. <laughs> I was at Burger King the other day, I seen a pamphlet right above the star that said, God's last name is not damn. Don't be using God's name in vain. People tell us that all the time, like, God gonna punish you for using his last name in vain. I don't think he that petty, because he ain't tell us what his last name was in the first place. <laughs> but what if we die and all of us get to heaven? Well, some of us. <laughs> you get to heaven right above the prayer of the gates, they got God damn. <laughs> all of us be standing there like, God damn. <laughs> God's last name is damn. <laughs> I've been holding back all this time. <laughs> when I date, I hate dating spiritual women. You know, the ones that be like the sage sticks waving around the house. Talking about they trying to get rid of the evil spirits. I be sitting there looking at them like, you the only evil spirit in this world. You walk outside that door like right there, all the evil spirits will be gone. <laughs> They like doing stuff like light incense and making tea right before sex. I'm like, you ready to do it? I'm like, no, I'm ready to go to sleep now. That's some stuff I do at bedtime. I'm about to go over to girl houses playing music and cooking chicken. That's my time. <laughs> gotta be careful out here. My nephew, he just got shot. Both his legs. I had to go to the hospital to see him. Walk to the hospital bed. I was like, hey, nephew, how you doing? He looked at me and said, hey, nephew, uncle, I'm doing good. I just want to let you know when I get out of here, can I come stay with you? I looked right down at him. I said, hell no. Now, I'd be damned if I'm in the room laying down. These niggas coming in trying to finish your ass off. <laughs> well, I love you, nephew, but I love you from a distance. <laughs> I live a peaceful life, I do. <laughs> well, it should be over, but you become peaceful, though. You just, you know, to the age where I want to learn a lot of new stuff, like just took up a CPR class, learn how to do CPR, because you never know you might have to help somebody one day. I really ain't going to use it. Like, I don't like putting my mouth on random people like that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if I'm out somewhere, you know, it's like 20 other people around, and they don't know how to do it, and I'm the last resort, then I go ahead and use it. <laughs> They'll be like, hey, son, you got the CPR? I'll be like, yeah, but let me go to the bathroom real quick. Right? <laughs> when I come back, they'll be like, sorry, sir, you dead already. I'll be like, oh, my bad. Y'all let me know next time in case the other 20 of y'all don't know how to do it. I'll go ahead and come to me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm blessed to be here, man. I come from the two of the most dangerous cities in the world. I was born in Chicago, raised here in Memphis, Tennessee. Like, I'm immune to violence, though. We used to have drive-bys all the time in Chicago. That's right, my mama used to put, cut off all the lights and put my two sisters and I in the tub. 
Now, the only thing about that, we had a window right above the tub, so when they started shooting, pow, 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 all the glass started falling on us. I would be looking at my mom one day and say, hey, we would have been safer in the toilet. At least we got the top on. <laughs> and now I'm going to school with glass in my eye because I was trying to prevent getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up around the drug dealers, the killers, and the murderers, so I couldn't do nothing but turn out to be a thug. I'm a nice thug. I'm a thug with a conscience. Like, I can't do nothing with my conscience to eat me up. Like, I'm the type of dude I'll rob you, but I give your money back when I get paid. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, he put that 500 I took from you last week. Sorry about putting that gun to your face, but I knew if I would have asked you to borrow, you would have said no. Nah. <laughs> and you needed that gun for some insurance. <laughs> <laughs> All that like get yeah, to me. You got, I mean, you got to gravitate towards the positive stuff going on here in the city. Like, I like going out to a lot of shows, listening to the poets. They my favorite. Sometimes damn poets don't be making no sense at all. <laughs> You hear him like, yeah, y'all give it up for Devon. He get up there, yeah. As I look out my window pane, and the glass hit my eye, and I wake up out of the dream, and all I had to ask myself, did I see I spy? That's that piece, y'all. That walk out. He was like, it was a piece of shit. That didn't make no sense at all. And another poet get up there, give it up. Up there. Yeah, as I see you walking down the street and my eyes meet you before I do, all I have to do is ask myself when I sneeze, did you say hot chew? <laughs> That's that piece, y'all. You be like, what? You be like, you know what? It's four pieces to make a whole. Let me see them other three pieces because that one never was good at all. That <laughs> I like that ending though, that's that piece. That's something you can use every day in your life right there. Get pulled over by the police, you write you a ticket. That's that piece, officer, appreciate it. Thank you. Get to argue with your girlfriend, walk out. I can't take this shit no more, that's that piece. She's like, that's that piece of what? <laughs> Took the last piece of apple pie, bitch. That's the one. <laughs> Pretty happy guy, man. I don't let it like get to me in my life, I don't. If I want to get depressed, I'll log on to Facebook. Yeah, it's like Facebook can turn to an obituary. As soon as you log on, somebody that died or they want you to pray for somebody, you know? I was in a good mood the other day. I got my time. I seen the girl post a picture of her grandma. I said, hey, Facebook family, can you please pray for my grandma? She got shingles. I was there, like, oh, shit, I don't feel too good now. I hope shingles ain't contagious. <laughs> Now I'm going out and public folks look at me like, I'm bro, something wrong with you, you alright? I was like, man, we just found out that Sean's grandma, we got shingles. I don't know what the hell we gonna do. I didn't know what to comment under the picture, so when I got home, I just put it under there, well, tell her ass to stay off the roof. Because I think that's how you get shingles, I don't know. You gotta ask the Sean, but I don't know. Tell your grandma to stay off the roof. My thing on Facebook, I hate when y'all post a picture and say somebody died, R.I.P. Travis, but y'all never put on that how Travis died. I hate that. Because I got a curious mind. Now I got to scroll through 800 something comments to try to figure out how the hell did Travis die. Because I can't go see time, man. Like, go get addicted to crack cocaine. 
and they killed a couple of their children. You're like, that's exactly what you're supposed to do if you win that much money. Can't take no average person who used to make them twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year and all of a sudden get them three hundred something million and expect them to become a financial advisor all of a sudden. I know I go do something stupid. You give me three hundred something million, I know I go do something stupid like go buy me a couple of pounds of weed and try to flip my money. That's right. I read the name fancy books, you say you gotta invest your money. Man. You gotta make it work for you, you too. <laughs> That's a stupid question we always ask. How he died, how she died. That's an irrelevant question when somebody dies, but we always ask that question, though. It is. I know why we ask that question. You know why? So we won't go out like they did. <laughs> like somebody told you, man, how Robin died? You like, Robin got big bass and charge. You like, you know what? I ain't going that water no more. <laughs> I don't want to go out like he did. You know what I mean? You know what? I ain't even gonna take no bath no more. I'm gonna make sure. I don't go out like Robert did. I appreciate that. <laughs> Tell you how I survived here in Memphis for so long, 25 years. One thing my mama told me growing up was mind your business. That's right. She said, don't get in other folks' business. That's how folks get killed. And I applied that to my life as I got older. Like, I hear my neighbors fighting all the time. I hear that woman knocking on the wall talking about, help me, help me. I have to put a pillow over my head. For real, because I ain't got nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? I don't say no one else that having sex. I don't say no one else fighting. You know what I mean? What do you look like me going up there knocking on the door talking about, hey, what you doing to your girlfriend? He hit me upside my head. Now I'm going to lay her beside her. Who's going to go call the police? Somebody need to go get some help. <laughs> I stayed behind a good, good, good place here in Memphis, good environment. I stayed behind some gay apartment, you know. I tell you what happened there a couple weeks ago that I had an incident. Woke up 3 o'clock in my morning, 3 o'clock in the morning going to get my charger out of my car, hit my unlock pad, get that grandma charger out the armrest. I looked in my rearview mirror, I see a dude sitting in my back seat. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking like, what the hell? But guess what? I ain't saying nothing to him. I'm gonna grab my tribe, 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 Hey, you know, you gotta mind your business. Hey, you know? <laughs> other man here like me. Some of y'all call that weak, but I know, you know, some of y'all men here would try to play the macho role. Like, what, Larry, you would have said something to him. What, you would have like, wait, what you doing in my car? Pow! Now you would have shot your ass. <laughs> now you would have died over an old ass car that's leaking oil. <laughs> now your wife's gotta go out answering questions. How you got, girl? Damn bitch. Ambrose told him to mind. Gotta mind your business, man. Mama taught me a lot, man. She also told me if you had kids, you better make sure you take care of. So I got a 12 year old, and I, I do my best to take care of my son. I ain't the best father in the world. I think on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm probably like a 4.45. Anyway. <laughs> Kids, man, trying to teach them the stuff you don't know, you know, trying to teach them not to do things that you still doing. It's hard, you know. What I, mean? <laughs> I took plenty of DNA tests with me. You gotta make sure you get your DNA tests on your kids. <laughs> so me and my son, we look alike, but we got a lot of differences, though. We do. Like I like peanuts, he don't like peanuts. I like my eggs boiled. He like his fried. He loves his mama. I don't. <laughs> Get a DNA test. My friends be bragging to me all the time with their kids. I'm like, look, man, he got, he got my ears, he got my nose, he got my eyes. I'll be like, yeah, dude, he got your blood, though, because that's what he needs to be qualified. As well. <laughs> he got my ears, he got a dude called Street Dog, but dude, he got your blood. That's what you need to be checking <laughs> Nah, I love my son, but I do. He's spoiled, man. These millennial kids are spoiled. 
Now I'm like when we was growing up, man. I just took them back to the shoes. You try to pick up a pair of $25 socks to go with. I'm like, no, nah, you put them down. We going to the dollar store and get you some socks. We don't even play basketball or walk to school. I'll be damned if I pay $25 for a pair of socks. I was like, if dude can turn water into wine, flip flops, I know damn well you get on the bus and no socks on. That's all I'm saying. Can't spoil these kids, man. You can't. I think that's my last one, man. Shout out to the people that have four or five kids, man. I think that's my only one. I'm done. I think if I want some more kids, I'm going to go adopt one. That way, if I get tired of it, I can go give it up for adoption and won't feel guilty. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, I just want to get him back. I can't have him from there. He's getting on my nerves. <laughs> I even went to the stream to find out how to do your own vasectomy. I went on YouTube. Because I don't have no insurance. That's right. Go on YouTube. Teach me how to do anything. Type it in. How to do your own vasectomy. A white guy named Bob popped up. I don't know if he was a doctor or nothing, but he said he did it before. He told me I need three utensils. He said I need some scissors, a cigarette lighter, and a parachute string. And I did the operation, I did. And, uh, my penis can't get hard no more, but I, uh, I can't have no more penis. <laughs> Try to do the new school parents with my son, though. That's talking to him. That's what the uh, new school folks tell you to do. Talk to your kids. Don't whoop them as much as we got whooped. That was hard for us to do. I grew up in the 80s. You gonna talk to my mom. My mom had a sign on her door say, I do not talk to kids. <laughs> You can't talk to the old fashioned mama. I remember I woke up like 3 o'clock in the morning when I had a bad dream. I would knock on her door and say, Hey, mama, I don't feel too good. Because I just had a dream about two dragons and the dragon took my family away. My mom looked at me and said, Boy, if you don't get the hell out of my room talking to me about some dragons, I'm sitting here thinking about how I'm paying this damn life bill. And you talk to me about some dragons. Get down there, your ass. Man. Your ass gonna be eating dragon salad, man. I don't find no money to pay this life, man. Get your ass in that way now. Come on, look at me. She said, if there's some dragons in there, tell me to eat all these homies in there. Tell your dragon friends to do that. Nah, you know what, Bob? I ain't talking to you. I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> Mama didn't spoil us at all. I was the baby of three kids. She treated all of us the same. I remember one year before school, my mom bought me a pair of pants and a pack of pencils. That was it for the whole school year. Looking at my mom like, one pair of jeans for the last week for the whole school year? She looked at me and said something didn't make no sense. She was like, yeah, one pair of pants, but it got two leg holes in it. I'm like, yeah, you're right, mama. Yes, it is. One pair of pants. I remember she gonna see me in school with a pack of number one pills. <laughs> now if you remember anything about school, you know you can't fill out those hands on with number one pills. You gonna fail all of your damn shit. <laughs> I remember I came home and told my mom, my teacher said we gonna need some number two pills. She was like, well you better put two of them motherfuckers together. <laughs> and that's all I got the money for. Sitting around here telling me about two drag, two number two pills. Get that nigga on there. I told you, don't talk to me. Don't talk to no old school mama about nothing. <laughs> but we used to not get to school. We used to not get to the store now. We get them $100. Go to the store, fuck. They walk to the store. Bring back $55, $60. Walk to the store. Go to the store. Walk to the store. Bring back $55, $60. I remember back in the day, my mama sent me to school with pen rolls. Y'all remember those? That's embarrassing. Man. You think she's going to go on her purse and get some dollars out and she go up under her bed and grab that purple brown ground roll bag and get some 250 cent roll chip. Go to the store, fuck. You see that little thing? Mama ain't going to the store now. You see that? Get your ass to the store. That's pennies. That's money, too. You be like, why you think those damn money? You said, now walk to the store with the pen roll in your pocket. They hear this here. Got your pants hanging. I'm going to ask you for the whole way. Hey, man, you got a solid dollar for these two. Get the pen roll with the pen, man. You ain't got no solid dollar for these two shotgun shells. That's 
มาแต่เฮียอะไรเลิกไปนี่เรื่องของที่เรื่องนั้นนะครับเด็กแกเด็กแกพ่อมาตามมาชิงนะเด็กสปอร์ตเด็กจะไปดูเชิงมาชิงพุทธิกวานีนดาวน์ก็จะเข้ามาได้แต่ตอนนี้เด็กจะไปเล่นในมือเล่นมาชิงอาทิตย์ฟันจะต้องมาพุทธิกวานีแบบเพราะฉะนั้นเราต้องไปที่ชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของชั้นเรียนของ On this damn machine, I ain't putting on the one penny, man. Sound like I got twelve fifty cent pieces, man. Go get your supervisor. I'm trying to find out how to put this thing on mute. Machine loud. I was in that one day, put my last little piece of change in a machine. I feel the tap on my shoulder. And I turn around, it's the deacon of my church. I'm like, oh hell, what is this old ass woman? He's in a tattoo on my shoulder. My brother's on. How you doing? I look right back at his ass. I said, How in the hell look like I'm doing? I'm trying to change the brother back. And that's what the preacher was talking about last Sunday. Change the brother back. That's what the hell I'm trying to do. Now that joke right there ain't funny until I explain it. I said I was putting change in a machine. He asked me how I do. I said I'm changing for the better. Okay, I'm sorry. I went to college. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it was hard growing up, man. I grew up in a house with all women, man. My two sisters and my mama, no, no male representation in the house. Like, like my first girlfriend, she taught me how to tie my shoes. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, she got done. I'm looking at her like, can you be my dad? And like, so that's some stuff he's supposed to be teaching me. You know what I mean? Like after we got done, she took me outside, showed me how to play basketball and everything. <laughs> I was like, you're my girlfriend and my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so that my mama, they looking at me like I supposed to be the protector of the house. I'm looking at them like, who in the hell showed me how to protect the house when I'm outside playing double dutch with y'all? <laughs> I know how to jump. I don't know how to fight. I don't got y'all for all this run <laughs> God gave me a chance though, to step up to the plate, become man in the house. First year we moved here to Memphis, dude, breaking our house, dude, coming through our front door. I'm back in the room laying with my sister. She gonna tap on me and say, Amber, go in there and see what's going on. I tapped on her head right back. I said, shit, you go in there and see what's going on. You bigger than I am. Shit. You 220, I'm 75 pounds. What the hell do you think you gonna do to me? If I go in there. If I go in there, I'm gonna mess around being his helper, goddamn. Hey, look, man, help me with that TV over there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you be Man, that's why I'm a good father to my son. I had my father growing up, man. I used to talk to my father all the time on the phone. Yeah, I remember them little stale phone conversations. Your mama call you and say, Amber, come here, your dad on the phone. They get in there and ask you them the same two stale questions. Hey, boy, how you doing? I'm doing good. And how you doing in school? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I failed a couple of my tests, but my mama sent me to school with some number one pencil. Other than that, I'm doing all right. Well, I'm going to try to see y'all some Friday when I get my check. I seen my dad last week. I'm like, what Friday was you talking about? So we still ain't got no damn money, man. You talking about last Friday, this Friday, Friday after that, what Friday was you talking about? I ain't got no money yet. Dad came back in my life later on when I was like 24, 25. I already fucked up in life on it. I had a chance to stay with him when I first started doing comedy. He just said, you know, father been gone, so I try to teach you stuff you already know. I try to play makeup. Like any time I leave the house, this thing will make sure you don't get top and bottom block. I'm looking at him like, man, I'm 25 years old. I know how in the hell to lock the top and bottom block. <laughs> Since you said so, I'm leaving the door wide open. Let me, the students come in and bite you off in your ass. Lock the top and bottom block. I learned that in kindergarten. What the hell were you then? I'm going to be around here having sex with them girls. Make sure you put a condom on. I'm too late. I got a son out there. I got burnt twice. I learned by experience. 
That's what the doctor told me when he gave me them pills. Make sure you put a condom on when you have sex with these girls. <laughs> now, you would think going over women, man, you think I know how to talk to women, I don't, I'm still shy. And like when it's time for me to date, I like getting online and date, I do nothing. Getting online, texting girl, like, hey, what you doing? She's like, I'm laying down, what you doing? I'm like, I like that. Like, I got on Christian baby one time, trying to date. Don't never get on that, that's like, can't be deceiving sometimes. So when you log on, you think it's gonna be real Christian women when you log on, but as soon as you get on there, you realize them the same women on Facebook, gang. Right? Like, shit, there goes a challenger right there. I'm gonna pray for a grandma, I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? doing on here. I hit that already. We just did 69 yesterday. Now she on ChristianMeeva.com. She must have got saved quick. She must have got saved quick. Well, you had just got it on yesterday. Look at all the older folk got quiet when I said 69. Like y'all don't remember what the hell that is. They look at you scratching their head. What's that? The number before 70? Like, no, nah, that's a sexual position. Man. I ain't did in a while. I think I still remember how it go. Like, am I right? That's when the man lay down flat on the bed on his back and the woman get on top of him counterclockwise. Am I right? <laughs> Like 35, 40, they don't do 69 no more. You know why? Because they got to get up and go to work in the morning. I want the women to cut you out quick. Uh uh, I'm not getting on top of you doing all that flipping and flopping. I got to get up and go to work in the morning. I'm not doing no 69, 54, 23. I'm going to just lay here on the bed, open my legs, you get on top of me and do your business. Like, you know what, Joe? They don't even want to do it. Like, like, do your business. That doesn't sound sexy at all. You don't say that to a person you got to have sex with. Get on top of me and do your business. Sound like I'm just clocked in that word. Like, and brothers clock in and do your business. That's all right. That's all right. Don't lay down so you can go to work in the morning. They spoil it. Younger women, now you ain't got to ask them to do 69 because yeah. as soon as you get in the bed with them, they just automatically put their ass in your face. You be like, whoa, hold on now. Hey, I don't do this on the first go round now. I do this on the third go round. You don't just put your ass in my face like that. You take it off the back door and smell like quarter pounder. You don't put your ass in my face like that. Now I like quarter pounder with extra onion, but I ain't got a tape for them right now. You don't do that on the first go round. You do that on the third go round. But I'll let you know this time. I'll make an exception this time. Don't do it no more. Now, nah, when I date girl, I like dating older women preferably over younger women. I think older women take care of their hygiene more than younger girls do. Like right before you do it with an older woman, she'll be like, hold on, baby, let me go in here and freshen up. And y'all will take that big old bag in the bathroom this time. Y'all are freshening up. Like, I don't know if y'all going there and take a full bath, but y'all just going there and watch the spot y'all day and you piss on it. Because if that's the old woman out with her neck smell good, but her kneecaps are dirty as hell. She's like, look at her, like, you ain't going there and take no full bath. You done went in there and wiped out your shea butter wipes. They went the hell with Smell that shea butter on your neck, you know. I'm giving away too many women to see this right now. Man. I don't know if y'all being petty like me, but a woman told me she took a full bath. I like going in the bathroom and checking her. Like, I go around in there and put my hand around the tub. I don't feel no water. I'm like, she done wiped down them damn wipes. Look at that garbage can by the sink. You see him throwing my phone. He's like, she could have told me she wasn't going to take no bath. I still was going to do it to her. Should have just let me know. <laughs> Young girls, sometimes you gotta convince them to take a bath, though, you do. Y'all be out all day, they come in, jump straight in the bed, got their black film on the bottom of their feet, look like a barbecue hot dog, you know. Oh, uh, look, Andy, you about to go in there and take a bath. 
they be lying to me. I took a bath early. You be like, I know, but we went to the park. We went over to the mama house. We then went to the movies. You want to go in there and take a bath? <laughs> I know that I spend the last under I was with. I let her use my bathroom and freshen up, take a bath. She left out, I went back in. She was so dirty. She left a ring around the tub on the outside of the tub. Yeah, I know, right? But I still slept with her because it's the inside that matters. I just told her don't do it no more. Now, now, dating can be hard, though, man. I don't care what age you are, dating can be hard. One thing I can't give advice for men, you make sure you have your, your money together when you dating women like stability. And am I right, women? Y'all like, like stability. That's right, men. Y'all make sure they have their money together. So if you stay in that household with a woman, she made more money than you, it's only a certain amount of decisions you can make in that household. <laughs> Like, I tried, you know, my girl was down the kitchen cooking me something to eat. I come downstairs like, yeah, baby, can you get my cheese on my burger while it's inside the skillet? I'm like, my burger's like that. And then Joe Lee looked at me and said, Ambrose, you're not in a position to be making life drink decisions like that. I was like, damn, baby, I just, I don't want my cheese left it on my burger, now my feelings hurt too. Now I see why we ain't go to Burger King so we can have it our way. <laughs> No, when you date, though, you got to make sure that uh, your collar is better than hers, too. Make sure your collar is better than hers. Because if y'all don't, then, you know, it's going to be some problems. Women like to play mind games, too. Like, right before y'all go somewhere, she'll look at you and be like, what car you want to drive? You look right back at her and be like, you know damn well what car you want to drive. The one going to get up there first and leave the least amount of oil. I'm going to drive your car, same car we drove last week. Uh, you know I can't put you back in my car and I got this stuff falling off my ceiling. I don't want to hear your mouth go up. If you got a whole car and your ceiling falls down, just go your whole car away because you cannot replace the ceiling on your car. I tried, I tried to put a sheet rock up there and paint over it. That little stuff still just be falling down everywhere. Seems like it's raining foam. <laughs> First time I had them up, I was sitting there riding around, I got the windows down, the wind just circulating this stuff everywhere. She gonna look at me and say, hey, bro, this stuff in my eye, no in my eye. I said, I got the same shit in my mouth. And you don't hear me over here? But you thought I was over here beep the side. I need you to blow in my mouth. You thought I was blowing your eye, you blow in my mouth. Uh, in conclusion, <laughs> now, I live a really peaceful life. I don't let a lot of people get to me. I, I can't say uh, when my son and his mother separated, you know, back in 08, she put me on child support even though she knew I was going to take care of my son and that kind of messed with me a little bit. So instead of doing like any other band would do, like go over there and put her tires on flat or bust the windows out of the car. Uh, I just wrote a poem about it, you know what I mean? So if y'all want to hear it, just snap your fingers like this. And the name of this poem is called, If You and I Didn't Have This Little Boy Together, I Wouldn't Give a Damn. <laughs> if you and I didn't have this little boy together, I wouldn't give a damn. If a bald eagle came picked you up by your lace front wig and flew you 300,000 feet in the air and dropped you off in a pool with no water in it, I wouldn't give a damn. If you and I didn't have this little boy together, I wouldn't give a damn if your ass drowned in a bowl full of grits. I wouldn't do nothing but stir the grits up and hit you in the head with this big ass wooden spoon. I wouldn't give a damn. If you and I didn't have this little boy together, I wouldn't give a damn if somebody filled your titties up with popcorn seeds and put you inside a chicken coop with your arms and legs tied behind your back. Watch them chickens go get your titties to your head and If you and I didn't have this no boy together, I wouldn't give a damn. That's the peace, y'all. That's it. Like, I really ain't that type of person, so I really don't wish all that stuff to happen to me. All I'm saying, if I was at home chilling one day and somebody called me and said all that stuff did just happen to me, I'd be on the other end. Like, I don't give a damn. Alright y'all, that's that piece, but I ain't ever